This week in Obsidian, there was the release of 1.19, which actually updated the installer for the Obsidian application. So when you go to install Obsidian or download the version you're using, it will update the installer, which needs to be done manually, not automatically for all of the PC and Mac devices. So when you update it, you'll see the installer in the About section. The other update is the ribbon update where you can manually move, rearrange and take things away from the ribbon which is in the left side part of your obsidian view. You can take them off, add them in, but what I actually do is use a community plugin called Commander which allows me to add any commands to the ribbon and Commander had a recent update which works with this new ribbon customization. By using the Obsidian Beta Reviewer Auto Update Tool, or BRAT, I can actually copy a link from a GitHub repo of a plugin, put it into this plugin, and it will give me access to the beta features. And the Another Quick Switcher plugin released beta features, and for those unfamiliar, Another Quick Switcher is just like the core Quick Switcher, but you can create your own custom searches. So this is a recent search where you can search by tag, header, link, change the search target and the update for this beta is to change the target extensions. So basically it includes the canvas core plugin inside of any of the searches that you can create. Here are some of the other default searches from the another quick switcher plugin. You can also create grep commands which are complicated or more complicated searches and for those that watch the Chris or pseudo meta vault tour he actually uses this plugin to look for the header inside a file and so he can search the outline essentially inside of a file. The database folder plugin added lots of bug fixes, some language support, color bug fixes, and added some customization to the date week or calendar, calendar date property. And as you can see, it now starts from Monday going to Sunday, which is my personal preference. The homepage community plugin loads a page or workspace that you've specified in the settings when you first open up or click on homepage. And what they've done is they've added in the ability to revert the view on close. So when navigating away from the homepage, it restores the default view and it also lets you pin the homepage. The full calendar plugin is another plugin that I use quite a lot where you can add your own calendar for a day view, three day view, week, month, list. There's loads of customization when you're adding in views, but the update has allowed the full calendar experience, the full calendar views to be put into the sidebar. So you can go to the command palette, open up the full calendar in the sidebar, then save it in a workspace, add it to a hotkey, a commander, or anything like that. So you can see the three, one, list, view, all that sort of stuff inside of the sidebar, which to me is really beneficial. And when you're adding an event, you can do it straight from any file in Obsidian. The self-hosted LiveSync plugin got lots of updates and you can see it's improved some of splitting markdown, saving chunks. And what this plugin does is allows you to create essentially a place for all of your files to sync to when you're working on different devices. So it's a live sync rather than the current asynchronized version of Obsidian Sync but it does require a bit of code knowledge and understanding of how this sort of setup works. And to me, that's too much. So I use VS Code and I'll leave a link to a video at the top. Space repetition was spoken about quite a bit in the Discord server. So the Space Repetition Community plugin tries to replicate lots of elements of Anki, does a really good job of it. And you can see there's lots of separators for the different type of flashcards or cards you can put inside of a file. For those unfamiliar, when you're adding in information into a file, you can add any of those separators to bring up questions or answers. So then when you go to 
practice your flashcards, it will then show you a window. Now I'm going to edit this one and you can see it's brought up the file the flashcard is in, so I can edit it later, go through, show answer, see if I've got them right, wrong, or if it was easy, hard, good. Basically measuring how competent you are and you can change the algorithm as to when the flashcards next shown. And when you go back to the file, you can see there's a comment underneath the cards. And that is the space repetition, the part of the algorithm that's used to determine when the flashcard should be shown again. But you can see the bottom one doesn't have a comment because we edited the card. Then we can go, we can do the card, say, yeah, that was good. Now we've completed them all and it's added that SR down the bottom. For anyone using TAS instead of Obsidian, if you're not using the TAS plugin, I would highly suggest you at least take a look at it. And there was a massive update with so many changes, I can't go through them all, but there was a big change to the way sorting tasks is done inside of the task query. There was also updates to the help documentation. And I think the task help documentation is probably some of the best documentation of the plugins out there. So it's certainly good to see the documentation being updated as the plugin adds features, which sometimes can be difficult for plugin developers. And as you can see here, you've got the introduction section and the quick reference table, which I used all the time when I was using the task plugin. And it helps you quickly see what you actually need to put into the task query with all of the new sort information there. Then if you do want to go and find out how to use it, there is a how to section as well. But when we go into Obsidian, you can see this is just a very basic task query inside of a code block that's looking for all the tasks in the vault that are not done. It then shows me the tasks, I can tick them off, I can navigate to them and find where they are inside the vault. Now, this next plugin isn't technically a full plugin. It's a community plugin that's not available in search yet because it hasn't been vetted by the developers. But I've seen a couple of things inside of the Discord that got me intrigued. And you can see Chris or Pseudometa is using it to play Spotify, play Tetris inside of Obsidian, which is certainly a unique use. If you think I've missed something out, let me know in the comment section below. And all the information in past, present and future updates are in the Obsidian course, link in the description below.